All right, I just came back, but let me just uh, continue playing the music in the background while I munch and I read a few comments. Just let him call her slove maid. That's how I will remember her, even though she... COVID restrictions. No. Even though she has a designated name like a firearm, I'm not going to remember it. Because how do I pronounce CZ? Everyone has a certain degree of pervertedness. Some more than others. My absolute favorite is people that are seemingly innocent and pure, and then they discover their sexuality. It's almost like a floodgate opening up. They get wild. Are you saying Hachan's sex drive is weaker than yours? <laughs> Considerably so. Hachan's sex drive is like less than one tenth of my own. <laughs> if anything, I am suppressing my sex drive. Cause yeah, just yeah. Um, women can definitely draw and write fan service. They understand the psychology a lot more than men. Men are more straightforward. Whereas women know how to world build and create an environment. And situations that are very erotic. Um, time to chat. Lucifer from DC Comics is based on David Bowie. But the show knew they couldn't do that service. So they made the show's version a fan of Bowie. Gotcha. Low-key, I'm going to reread the Overlord after season four. Everyone is perverted in some form if they say they aren't, that they're lying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every <laughs> everyone has their kinks. Uh, fair enough. I thought he was ignoring her name, but Slav made works. Do you honestly expect me to memorize two letters with a sequence of numbers? That's just impractical. <laughs> That's like Elon Musk's kid's name. Come on. <laughs> You're Slav made now. Embrace it. All I remember is the ending of Overlord Story, which was 10 out of 10. Tell me nothing. My arm is sore when I got my COVID vaccine, but that seems to be the only side effect I'm having. Which arm? The third or the fourth? Uh, it makes me ponder the level of lust for each individual people. Is it sometimes misguided love or just insane behavior? So the chemical um, composition of what we call love is the exact same one that we feel... Uh, during a fight or flight response. It's just anxiety. So what you feel, like say you're walking down the street and someone pulls a knife on you, you're actually going to feel the same chemical compound as you would when you're in love with someone. It's a bit misguided, but the serotonin, endorphin, and uh, there's one more chemical is literally the chemical compound of love. So what you're really feeling isn't unique. It's just your body's response. And you can associate that feeling with whatever you want, which is why some people end up associating it with violence and they get the same pleasure as they would being with a person through violence. And that's where sadism comes from and masochism and other things. That's how it happens. Also, some serial killers actually feel the same thing when they're killing people as love. And you're like, how can they feel that if someone's begging and struggling? I'm like, no, no, no. That makes it worse because that's when they really get off. It's quite interesting. The human psyche is very malleable. You can change it into whatever you want if you get someone young enough. You can program people. One of the requirements for joining the guild was that they had to be a working member of society and could not have a human avatar. I remember that being mentioned in episode one. You can haul, call her Delta, but Slav made works. I think Slav made is a lot cooler than Delta. <laughs> Your shot gets you sore first, but you are going to get a second shot. Just prepare for some tough illness that you get experience from my own experience. I heard that the um, shots have less than a 40% effectiveness against the Delta variant. Fun fact, Delta has a relatively high karma. Good natured personality compared to the other members. She really loves cutie things like Penguin Butler. I would have preferred not to know that considering I've only seen one scene of her. That's technically a mild spoiler. Delta puts one yen stickers on things she likes or finds cute. What the fuck? Guys, don't tell me about this stuff. I want to actually enjoy it blind. Now I've already been told that she has a good nature. Whereas before these comments, I had no idea what her nature was. Don't tell me any of that stuff. Like none. I put the cliff about better awakening her instincts on the Discord server. Beautiful. I can actually pin that now. Overlord isn't over. We have 14 books, so the author said he would make 17. Each book is each season is three books, so we are up to nine books in total. You're not a human. Are you a demon then? Nani. Delta's karma is positive 100 neutral. 
What did I just say about not telling me more? It's not a spoiler. It's just fluff stuff you don't see in the anime. Yeah, but I've only seen her in one scene and I don't know how she's going to interact with other people. So it's a spoiler because you're giving me details about a person that we've just met and seen no interactions with. Which I ask you not to give and then you just gave me more details. Christian, come on, man. <laughs> Elon Kids' name is Kyle E-X-A-E-A-12. Wasn't it like a math symbol and everything? It was like nuts. All right, let's kick off the next episode. I'm going to munch while we watch. Guys, when I ask for something, please take it as I ask it. I don't, I don't fluff things. I made them literally. I'm very bad with fluff. I suck with fluff. I am not fluffy very much. That brings me back to a girl that called me her fluffy seal. And I'm like, seals aren't fluffy. And then she's like, they are when they're small. And I'm like, what the fuck is with you? <laughs> her sex drive was like, fucked. <laughs> I am utterly convinced she would have made an amazing porn star. I have gathered you here to discuss our future. Alberto, overseer of the Guardians, and Demiurge, our greatest strategist. I would hear your opinions. Lord. Lord. Now that we have put my initial plan into motion, tell us what doctrine you believe Nazarick should follow moving forward. If anyone else has an opinion, you may raise your hand to speak. I vote for radical Islam. In order to facilitate our discussion, I ask that Demiurge explain our current situation in a way that all can understand. Begin with our latest operation. As you wish. <sighs> I may be their leader, but I don't have much experience in this whole conquering thing. At least this way. I can pretend I understood the plan. Really? Says the guy that fought the lizard men, wiped out a bulk of their soldiers, then resurrected one, while using the girl in charge to spy on her own people. And you don't know anything about conquering. What? What I do know is that Nazarick's survival is our first priority. Second would be spreading the name of Ainz Ulgong throughout the world. Actually, that's just my priority, since I want to find out if any of my old friends are trapped here like me. But that might have to take a back seat, especially when we still know so little about this world. As you've likely heard, thanks to the efforts of Mare's group, we've subjugated all the leaders of Eight Fingers. As a result, Nazarik now has complete control of the Riestes underworld. Hmm? This brings us closer to Ein's ultimate goal, which you all know is world domination. Hmm? Or I should hope you know if you're not a fool. <laughs> huh? Wait. You didn't know that your own goal was well up, Guys, what the fuck? No means no, ladies. It reminds me... <laughs> Anything can be eaten even if you say no. No means no, ladies. It reminds me of this um, circumstance... Ah, oh, if you have to go Flame Lord, be good, man. It reminds me of this circumstance that um, I had, you know, the first girl I mentioned with the incredibly high sex drive. Anyways, I was hanging out with her for a while and I wasn't that into her, but unbeknownst to me, she started getting into me. And um, during one of her friend's birthday parties, which I was invited to, I don't even know why, her friend literally went out of her way to tell me to be very careful with her because um, she's broken a lot of guys' hearts. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm just friends with her. Anyway, long story short, she started getting interested in me and then it turned into a thing. Um, anyways, while we were hanging out, she used to do this thing where she's like, oh, I'm around because I used to live at university at that time. And she would literally be like, oh, I'm around. Can I pop over? And I'd be like, sure, why not? And this one time she's like, oh, um, I've got a friend with, with me. Is that cool? I'm like, yeah, no problem. So she brings her friend over. It's cool. I meet her all casual and shit. Anyway, this one other time she's like, oh, yeah, um, uh, uh, I'm at university and my friend's over. Is it cool if we drop by? I'm like, yeah, cool. Why not? Her friend turns up by herself. And I'm like, oh, that's okay. And she's like, oh, I'll be there a little bit later. 20 minutes pass. 30 minutes pass. And I'm like, where the fuck is she? Anyway, her friend 
unbeknownst to me, was interested in me. <sighs> and she was doing this really awkward thing where she was trying to make moves on me, but I wasn't interested in her because she was not my type. And because I had only met her once before, I didn't actually get the hint. And I didn't realize at the time that her friend, the one with the really high sex drive, tried to hook that up so she could hook up with me. But I didn't know about that, nor was I interested. So it turned into this really awkward thing. Anyway, long story short, she tried to sort of like force herself. It didn't really work. Um, I had to kind of get her off me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not interested in this, not interested in you, stop it. And she was trying to tickle me in a way because I'm ticklish. She was tickling me, but at the same time, she was trying to get my clothes off. <laughs> anyway, I finally get her off me. I'm like, are you going to stop doing that? She's like, yeah, yeah, I promise I'll stop. Cool. I let her off. She starts doing it again. I had to kick her out at that point. And then I pretty much contacted our mutual friend. And I'm like, what the fuck was that about? She's like, oh, she was into you and I thought you would like her. I'm like, uh, no, I don't. She's not my type. And then she's like, what is your type? And I basically told her what my type was because like I was casual and I'm really honest. She's like, oh, okay, cool. I'll keep that in mind. And I'm like, what? By the way, I was sleeping with this girl at that point casually. And I'm like, why are you bringing the other girls? She's like, oh, you know, I'll just bring a, I'll just bring a few girls if I find them. And I'm like, what? You know, she was weird. I don't know. She In her mind, she had that it would please me or something. Anyway, long story short that I didn't realize was that she really started liking me. But she had absolutely no idea how relationships work because she's never actually been in a relationship or interested with anyone. Which is why she sort of hurt so many people because she was never interested in them. Long story short, the situation kind of reversed that she was into me, but she didn't let me know that, nor did I know that. So she kept doing things which she thought would make me happy because she had no concept of what a relationship is, nor how to express emotions. It was kind of a really fucked up scenario. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> yeah, that's what that opening theme reminded me of. Guys, no means no. <laughs> Whoever thinks that women don't get rapey has no idea. It, it happens both sides. No means no. Like, sometimes no means no. Wait, so is that where we're at? World domination? Why were you expecting Dark Overlord of Evil wiping out the lizard men and raising them as undead to fight for you? What were you expecting? Okay, okay, don't freak out. You gotta act like it was your idea after all. Why are you freaking out? Actually, world domination might be a good way to get her name out there. So let me get this straight. You're trying to keep Nazarek safe by not pissing off any other possible players in the world. At the same time, you're increasing their reputation by conquering other lands. Why? Even if we have a bad reputation, at least people will know who we are. Oh my god. My friends might be a little surprised with the direction I'm taking the guild, but whatever. There will be plenty of time to explain things later, and that's if I find them. He told Demiurge that he wanted to conquer the world as a joke in season one and he took it seriously. Yeah, that's actually happened to me once or twice with people that didn't understand the concept of sarcasm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Demiurge is excited as fuck. You remembered. Of course, my lord. I remember every last word you relayed to me. Oh my god, he's just doing this to please Bone Daddy. You said taking over the world might be enjoyable. Oh my god. Yes, I recall the conversation. See, these are consequences of your own actions, Ainz. Take responsibility. I'm pleased to hear it. From that one time. None other, my lord. What time? I see. Your impeccable memory pleases me. Your praise is- Wait, did he just smile? Did he just smile? Is that him smiling? Oh my god, he's smiling. Oh my god, he's smiling! Oh my god, he actually smiled. I see. Your impeccable memory pleases me. Your praise is too much. But a world domination is a complicated affair. No, it's not. You can literally raise the undead. You can literally grow your army while you're conquering. Literally. I must agree, my lord. 
How do you suppose we begin our conquest? Haven't you already begun by taking over the lizard men? I humbly suggest we announce Nazarek to the public. Why? Hmm? Since the ones who controlled Chaltir are still moving behind the scenes, I fear that staying in the shadows any further will only encumber us. How? That's my opinion as well. How'd you come to that conclusion? They still don't know what you exactly are. They just bumped into Chaltir through sheer luck. How do they even know Nazarek is a thing? Unless Chaltir was going, how would they associate Chaltir with Nazarek? We can hunt them more effectively in the open. Right now, we're wasting resources trying to maintain secrecy. Yes, but if they know that you exist, then that just makes it more comp- You know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna keep watching. Hmm. An appealing proposal. There is merit in controlling the kingdom from the shadows and striking fear into the hearts of their leaders. Mm -hmm. But in doing so, we may force ourselves to answer to the whims of their throne. That's not a pleasant prospect. Frankly, I find their leadership quite lacking. Save for one individual. Hmm? There are other concerns as well. For example, being tied to one kingdom limits our movements. If the ones who targeted Shaltir have more flexibility than us, we would be at a disadvantage again. Therefore, Lord Ains, I propose that the Great Tomb of Nazarek enter the stage of the world as an independent nation. What are you, big boss? Shut up, chicken! It appears this came as a surprise, but I assure you Lord Ainz has been thinking of doing this for a long time. What? In the end, I fear my intellect's rather trifling compared to your own. I won't pretend to grasp the depth of your wisdom, though I do hope my explanation skims the surface accurately. No, on the contrary. You ascertain my plans perfectly. I'd expect no less of my lead strategist. Oh yeah, so instead of just making ourselves known to the world, we are going to declare the war with everyone in the world. Nice work! That's definitely gonna- Where the fuck did the dragons come from? That's definitely gonna keep the place safe, isn't it? Merely observing your actions made it crystal clear anyone could have reached the same conclusion. Yes, I recall my actions. I am pleased to hear it. From that one time. None other, my lord. What time, damn it! Well, of the many actions I've taken, which do you deem the most relevant to our current discussion? Your accomplishments in Karn Village come to mind. I suppose that did go rather well, didn't it? At the risk of sounding sarcastic, you did subjugate the village personally, my lord. There's no way it wouldn't go well. I didn't know that was you, Lord. That's the human village, right? Helpless humans, our Lord could have eradicated with ease. And yet, he decided to rule over them peacefully instead. You see, Lord Ainz considered that village a sort of testing ground. He's had conquest on his mind long before today. <laughs> so, we've got a situation where Ainz is the head of the family, but Demiurge is the neck. And he can point the neck in whatever direction he wants. So who's the real power behind the throne? I haven't seen Inferia yet, boss. You figure he's still sleeping? Yeah, maybe. He was up late working on his potion last night. He's missing out on this nice weather. So what's for breakfast today, boss? <laughs> well, Kaijali, thanks to your hard work, we've got plenty of meat. So I'll be whipping up a nice and hearty stew. Nice arms. No, I'm still scrawny compared to you. Sure, but you've got great definition. I mean it. Good morning, Henry. Good morning, Chief. Nice weather, huh? Mr. Goblin, another hard day at work? You bet. Can't leave all that farming to you and your husband now, can I? What would we do without you? I know I've said this before, but we really can't thank you goblins enough. If you weren't here to lend a hand, we'd have been forced to abandon the village long ago. I see. So we're short on people even now? Mm -hmm. I'm afraid so. Thankfully, the survivors stuck around, but we haven't been able to bolster our numbers. We've got a long way to go. And the only person that moved here from the city is that ex-adventurer, Miss Britta, right? 
Can't blame them, but there aren't many people crazy enough to move to a dangerous place like this. What have I told you about being negative? Things will work out eventually. You say that, but... You remember what the government officials said. We'll have lower taxes and exemption from civil service until the village can pull itself together again. It That's pretty much what they used to do at the time. <clears throat> Any places that they needed to build villages, they would just lower the amount of... It wasn't tariffs, but the amount they needed to pay in taxes relative to whatever. So more people would want to go there. Same thing they used to do was... Um, well, at the time, what they used to do was delegate land to knights and lords. And then they would have to give a certain amount of resources based on the number of land that they have, as well as whatnot. But because they had land, they needed people to work the land so they would get peasants to work there. In exchange for working the land, the peasants would get housing, they would get food, they would get stuff like that. And the bigger the villages were, they needed also to, also to provide military forces to the local lord who needed to provide soldiers to his sorry, to his king in times of war. So it was like this whole structural power system, which is not too different to how it is today, except we don't actually provide, you know, people for war. We more so just provide taxes. And people aren't, you know, peasants working for someone in exchange for housing and food. They are actually working for anyone in order to pay for housing and food. So, you know, it's not exactly the same thing, but it kind of is the same thing. Demiurge doesn't realize that he's the net through he thinks, that Ainz already knows everything and more than him. Yeah, he idolizes him too much. Or maybe he's just playing the smart game of appeasing his overlord while guiding him at the same time. We'll find out. It's not going to happen overnight, and that's fine. China did a very similar thing um, in certain areas where they needed to build things like ports and buildings and rail system and whatnot. They effectively created a place in China that had zero tax. They were called the economic zones. So it was just basically land by a waterway and they needed docks and whatnot. So they just created a zone of zero tax and all these big companies, you know, Apple and every other company in existence, wanted to create factories because one, zero tax, two, they pay people 10 to 20 cents a day to work in these factories. But in order for them to get the things in and out, they needed to create a dock. So what happened? All these companies created these docks, but the docks were on government owned land. So these companies literally financed the creation of docks, roads, railways, built these factories and whatnot because zero tax, right? So the government could actually create these whole infrastructures without paying a cent because the companies did it for them or because the area was zero tax. Then later what they did was they just bumped up the tax for foreign companies and kept it low for local companies, which means the foreign companies started giving control of the production facilities to local companies. And because the copyright system in China is if it's not registered in China, it doesn't apply. They started losing patents because say a company has a motor or a battery or a system design or an IT system design that's registered internationally under copyright right since it's not registered in china it's free for anyone to use so china can make their own copy of the exact same product non-branded literally from the same factory and sell it overseas without being sued because china yeah globalization ladies and gentlemen fun times she's right give it some time and i'm sure that people will want to move here why do you think some chinese knockoffs fit perfectly in our technology because it's the same shit from the same factory Quite literally, you can buy all the parts of an iPhone and put it together and it'll work fine. The only thing you'll be missing is the software registration, which, I mean, you could probably bypass if you're not worried about software updates. And it would still be compatible with all the satellites. <laughs> Legalized patent infringement. Well, let's just look at it this way. The Chinese government doesn't give a fuck about the rest of the world. They just care about each other. They care even less about their citizens. We'll keep working hard in the meantime. Fair enough. Lord Gone did go to the trouble of saving our lives. The least we can do is keep living, no matter how lean the times may be. Agreed. Someday I hope to pay him back for the kindness he showed us. Wow, that's some smell. Sure is. Inferia, we're having breakfast soon. Bring your grandmother. Oh, morning, Henry. You're not going to believe this. You're really worked up. What happened? A miracle. Finally, uh, finally, uh, I made a brand new potion and it's all my own. This is going to be revolutionary. You know all the solutions and herbs I've been gathering lately? Well, I finally got the right proportions and the potion turned purple. Okay, that's enough of that. Thank you very much. You're clearly high off your own fumes, kiddo. Don't worry. You get breakfast going and we'll catch up with you soon, okay? 
I'll splash some cold water over his head, and you'll snap out of it in no time flat. Are you sure? Trust me on this. All right, good luck then. Uh... Purple? <laughs> You've got to pull it together, brother. <sighs> Let's be frank. You're in love with the boss, right? Uh... Mm-hmm. Then show her. You're giving all of your love to those potions. It's weird. All right, then. I'll try. Trying ain't gonna cut it, brother. Listen, show off your strength and she'll fall for you. I'm afraid strength isn't my strong point. Goblin, bro. This show is all about wing manging. I appreciate that. Goblin, bro. I'm calling you Goblin, bro. You got strength up here, so work with that. Tell you what, when the time comes for you to make your move, I'll pose like this. That'll be your cue to talk smart and show her those pearly whites. You know what he's gonna do? He's gonna do this, then he's gonna do this, then he's gonna do this, then he's gonna do the Egyptian thing, then he's gonna do the Arnold thing, and then he's gonna do this. <laughs> this pose, don't forget it. And if it looks like you should press your advantage, I'll hit you with this one. Ah, the Arnold pose! Then I'll do this pose. Yeah, the Arnold pose. And then this one. And after that, this. <laughs> I'm telling you, some more salt. <laughs> I ain't giving up till Miss Henry marries me. Leah, we took a vow not to make any moves on the boss. Don't you remember? It's right. She's got to make the first move. Too bad for you, then. I'm the leader, so she's going to take a fancy to me before you punks. You shut your mouth, Jugum. Who cares if you're strong? Punch him and see what happens. <laughs> they certainly are worked up today. Ruby powder, rings of magic, mystery shavings, emotion, and then stir it up. Um, Impy, you all right? Uh-huh. In fact, I've never been better. Grandma is still too busy working, though. Soon time. Hmm. Sorry, but the battle's already won. And I got the proof right here on my spoon. Look! This handsome goblin got an extra piece of meat! <laughs> That's right! I ate my meat, and at the bottom of the bowl, there was more meat waiting for me! And as you all know, that's one more piece than the allotted amount. In other words, it must be love! Um, it's a lie! You probably broke one big piece in two. Also, did anyone here witness the first piece? Perhaps it was actually just a bite of potato and you were mistaken. Henry thinks you're a creep. You know this deep in your heart. Our God asked us to ensure Henry's happiness. Dear Lord, please tell this creep how wrong he is. I thought your God was evil. Why do they care? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I better take him to bed now. Isn't the guy supposed to carry the girl? Some things are better left unsaid. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody gender stereotypes. <laughs> Isn't the guy supposed to carry the girl? Some things are better left unsaid. <laughs> what are we watching? Jugum and his friends do more than just protect the village from danger. They've brought smiles back to our faces. And for those who lost everything, they're like another family. After all they've done, there has to be some way I can repay their kindness. All right, everyone. Are you ready to do this? Mm hmm? Aim! Dosho! Dosho! <laughs> What the F are you doing? Right, what if that hits someone? Died. A fine row of arrows like that will send any intruders packing in no time. <laughs> right. Next wave. Line up. Hey, Henry, let me help too. I'm fine in here. But if you could take care of that job I gave you yesterday, then that would be great. It makes no sense for them to line up like that and fire in waves if they're doing a volley behind walls. The only reason they would need to line up is if they were using muskets or crossbows. And then you have the front line kneeling and then the back line over their shoulder, or you have the front line fire, then kneel while they reload and the second line fires. Uh, okay. I don't know why they're doing that in a volley. Not a single complaint. She used to be so spoiled. 
But she's been such a good girl since then. PTSD hits like a bitch! Hmm? Oh yeah, PTSD hit. Heard a bang. Are you okay? Yes, it's nothing. It seems I was a little rough on the knife, though. You gotta be careful with stuff like that. Since there's no blacksmith way out here, no one can fix it if it gets dinged up. Uh. We can't get maintenance done on any of our weapons, either. That must be inconvenient. Yeah, but we managed somehow. Ha! Working hard. Got it all ground up? Uh-huh. Did a bunch. All this. Oh, wow. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> that smell. Pretty intense stuff. It's like Enfy's potions. It's bad, but not that bad, right? <laughs> what she's making is something called Nkaishi. It's like a specialty of our village. These herbs can only be gathered this time of year. They're potent medicine. Sounds like this stuff must be big business for you. My apologies, Miss Nemu. Hmm. But look, I'm almost out of the herbs. I'll be done with these by the end of the day. Hmm. But I think we've already covered all the gathering spots that I know of. Aww. Nani? Kume. <laughs> hey. Oh my god, they're riding wolves. message for us? Yeah, it seems like something weird is happening in Tobe Forest. What do you mean? It can't be. Are the people who attacked the village back? No, it's like a disturbance coming from deep in the forest. That's bad timing because we need to gather those herbs before it's too late. Sorry, boss, but that's way too dangerous. I'd like to send out a scouting party, but it might take a while. We've got our hands full just watching over the village. I need to go out there in the next few days. The herbs aren't in season long and we'll be in a bad spot if we can't sell more. That's what happens when you take something out of the ecosystem. They took the um, hamster out of the forest that was controlling the ecosystem. It's similar to what they did when they took the wolves out of a national park, a national forest in the US. And all the animals that were grazing on plants and grass literally ate everything and there was nothing to eat and they started starving. They introduced two wolves back into the ecosystem and improved things because the wolves don't actually hunt animals to extinction. And as a result, there was enough food to go around and the smaller animals could actually eat as well. So, you know, I'm balancing the ecosystem. Nice work, Irons. If you don't remember, the horn offered the goblin general was a trash item. All of this is the product of a trash item. Yeah, I remember. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when you start playing with the world, Eins. Like offering that high tier potion to one of the people that's worth a lot of money, I think got them murdered at some point for money because it's so valuable. Let's bring this to Jugem and see what he says. Good, thank you. All right, here's the plan. While Miss Henry and her group are looking for herbs, the rest of us will spread out and scout the area, moving deeper into the forest. Report back if you see anything strange. As for Miss Henry's bodyguards, let me see here. Goko. Sir. Kaijali. Sir. Unlai. Sir. You ready? Yeah. yeah. I shouldn't need to tell you this, but her safety is top priority. Yes, sir. Enfi, we're counting on you too. Show the boss what you're made of out there. <laughs> <laughs> Make your move! Now's the time, huh? <laughs> Leave it to me. I'll take good care of you. I promise. <sighs> How kind of you. Thanks, Emphy. Huh? <laughs> That's not enough? I've prepared various alchemical uh, concoctions. So don't worry. <sighs> sure, sounds great. Not worried at all. Whoever made this is clearly a fan of Arnold because he's the one that made those poses popular in weightlifting. He took ballet classes, not to do ballet, but to learn poses that would show off his muscle structure before it was going for Mr. Universe and then Mr. Olympia. So he was the one that made these poses popular. Those are his signature poses. So whoever chose these particular poses is a weightlifting fan. I can tell you that. I mean, knowing one of them, sure, but knowing two of his most iconic poses and exactly how they're done, hmm, hmm. Yeah, Milk Moss. 
If you mix a clump or two of that in healing potions, it increases their effectiveness a bit. I never had a clue. Wow. So is it worth a lot of money? Uh, a little. Although in this case, the herb Enry is looking for is worth a lot more. I can come back here for some moss anytime. Roger that. Wow, Enfy's really something, huh, Henry? I can't tell any of these plants apart. All just green to me. Does that issue apply to all goblins? Like your people just aren't cut out for botany? Hell if I know, but I never met a goblin who was any good with plants. We're not much for gathering, but when it comes to hunting and skinning, we do just fine. Lots of shade here. The humidity is high enough, too. This is exactly the kind of place that those herbs like to grow. Let's spread out and look around. I found mm -hmm. some! You were right! I'm glad we brought you along. Call it good luck. Something wrong? Mm -mm. I'm just impressed, that's all. You this is a pretty much, um, it's that piece of advice that they tell you when you're taking someone out on a date, take them somewhere where you're doing an activity that you're good at, you know? Like, if you do rock climbing every week or something, take them rock climbing. To them, it's a new experience, but it's in your element and you're going to feel comfortable doing it. At the same time, you're going to give them an experience they haven't had before and you'll be in your element where you're more confident. And you can also impress them naturally without trying hard. He's kind of doing that passively now. He's in his element and she's like, oh my God, look at him go, you know? It's, uh, it's cute. What kind of anime are we watching again? Something about taking over the world? Call it good luck. Oh shit! Something wrong? Mm -mm. I'm just impressed, that's all. You found the herbs right away and you know how to pick them so much faster than me. Well, I am a pharmacist. I better be good at this stuff. I guess so. Oh, he's good with his fingers, eh? Thanks anyway, though. Kuma, you are a child. <laughs> It sounds like there's something coming our way. Better pull back and hide for now. Right. What the fuck? Goblin? Dobby? It's a child. Just watch and wait. Oh shit. It's a bar guest. I think the smell of the herbs must be masking our scent. Keeping you safe is our first priority. If the kid gets attacked, don't run out there to help him. It may seem cruel, but that's how it goes. That's nature in a nutshell. He's scared. <sighs> it's okay. We'll save him. Envy! All right, let's think. Why'd he run all the way here? If he knows what's happening in the forest, then he can warn us before it affects the village. Assuming we don't all die, there's no guarantee we can win against that thing. I can't fight, so maybe I have no right to say this, but if there's a chance we can help, we should. If someone is dying and we turn our backs on them in a way that's no different than siding with their killer, I was saved. So I have to do the same for those who are weaker than me. I'm sorry. Hmm. Ah! Uh, you heard the lady. Let's go. Hey, over here, little puppy. If you want to take a bite out of someone, we got more meat. Come and get some. All right, give it all you got. Reinforce armor! Nice one, brother. He's stuck. Not completely, and probably not for long if we keep struggling like that. Strike hard and strike now! <laughs> the chain! Get down! <laughs>
tribe are you from? Let's save the questions for later. We have to do something about those injuries of yours. Any way you can help? You're bleeding all over the place, aren't you? Don't poison me! What a pity. I was looking forward to giving this to Lord Gone. <laughs> oh. The Undone! This wasn't ideal, but at least I can tell Lord Gone it works, right? He created a healing potion. Oh, and here I thought you jerks were gonna kill me! Oh, I mean, thank you for saving my life. That's better. Show a little gratitude, brat. I'm not a brat! My name's Agu, and I'm the fourth son of Aw, the leader of the Gigo tribe! Nice. Sweet! Now we got bargaining power with another tribe. Nice to meet you, Agu. So what happened? Where'd you get all those cuts, and what are you doing in the woods? Where did he get all those cuts? Where did he get all those cuts? It's almost like it could have been a wild animal that was chasing him. I got attacked, so I ran, that's all. We need more details. Wasn't just the bar guest that attacked you. Uh, the giant of the east sent his minions. The giant of the east? And the demon snake of the west. He joined up with him. War is coming. Oh, closing theme. Oh, shit. Look at that clock. He looks like a Grim Reaper. Oh shit! The shipping begins. Is that Ainz? Oh, that music. Nice art, but I have to say that the art from season two was considerably better. Not saying that this is not good. I'm just saying the art from season two just felt like fucking amazing. I don't know, the art from season two, I want paintings on. Alright, let's not watch that, but they might have post-credits? No? No post-credits? Alright, not gonna watch it. Myths of bar guests originated from Yorkshire and are described as black dogs that prey on lone travellers. He created a new healing potion. The healing potion of his world are all blue. Combining blue and red. Oh, so it could be a potion that not only heals, but also gives you MP. Interesting. Winter is coming. Question, is the potion trash? I don't know. We'll find out. Two episodes complete. Indeed. Simple date plan. Go do something fun first. Then if you enjoy your time with them, then dinner. But split the bill the first date. Deals with gold diggers and freeloaders. Read it out of 10. I mean, I've always um, paid for the first date, but I've, I like... If I'm taking someone to dinner or something like that, that's not the first date. The first date I'm normally had with people is grabbing like a iced tea or a coffee or something. Something really casual. If I'm taking someone to dinner, it's considerably longer than, you know, 20, like an hour or two. Typically, I would always hang out with someone for an hour or two before that's a date. I, I, my, my, my feeling is that people put too much pressure on themselves. They meet someone. And then they think, oh, first step is to go on this massive five hour long date and end it with dinner. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what the fuck? You know, you met someone, talk to them, go for something casual. One, it's less threatening. Two, it puts less pressure. And when it comes to like um, dinner or something, I mean, go for your life. It, it, different people have different things. I refuse to pay the first 
dinner date as I don't want a freeloader using me as a free dinner ticket. Well, if you're going out with someone for a coffee or an iced tea, you are already going to suss out that portion of it. That, that's what I mean by people jump into the deep end too quickly. If you go hang out with someone, you're already sussing out all those things. Because if you've taken someone out, say, for a coffee or a drink or something, as a social gesture, you do that with workmates too, right? Like, I do that with workmates. I'm like, yeah, let's go grab a coffee. And I usually pay for it. Even if they want to pay for it, I do it. And I do that on the thing that they're kind of like, oh, well, I'll take you out for coffee. I'm like, cool. And so we sort of bounce back and forth. I do it as a social gesture. But at the same time, you also suss out the type of person that it is. And typically, when you're with someone from upper management, they'll want to pay. But I typically never let them pay. I always, if I invite them, I will pay. If they want to pay, they have to invite me. So I'm always kind of pushing to get that second meetup session. It's, it, it depends what you're going for. But if you're trying to suss out whether or not someone's there for the free meal, you'll figure that out much quicker if you're talking with them and you do little things rather than a big thing. Because if the first thing you're doing is a big thing and it's a dinner. Oh, thank you, by the way, Nala. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're doing a big thing, then it's so much easier to get someone that's just using you for the meal. But if you're chatting with someone and you've been chatting with them for a while and you've gone for a coffee, someone that's just going for the free meal isn't going to put that much time into you just to try to get a dinner. Get what I mean? So I think you might be overthinking it. And while it's not a bad thing, thing to go, you know, split season one on, that's totally cool. I typically always pay for the first one as a gesture. I don't know. It's just my thing, especially if I'm taking someone out because the association for me is I've taken them out. And if after that, they choose to take me out, that's totally cool. But I kind of, you know what I mean? Like I'm taking you out. I've thought of a place to take you out. It's kind of my gift to you. If you want to do the same thing for me, awesome. You know what I mean? But I haven't taken someone out like that until we've already hung out. Like, let's use Hachan for an example, because you know Hachan so well. I met her, like, the first time she came to university, so I hung out with her a little bit there. I scoped out info, she probably doesn't remember it, but then when there was, like, a welcome party, I spoke to her there for, like, 20, 30 minutes. After that, when there was, like, another party, which was, like, drinks and pizza and some music, I asked if she was going to that. And if she wanted to meet up there, I met her up there towards the end of that. After that, she had an allergic reaction and we went to the ER one on. Only after that did I actually ask her out on a date. And then that first date was a place that sells, it's called Pancakes on the Rocks. But more or less, it's in Darling Harbour, which is, you know, where boats are and stuff. Cool scenery. Uh, they sell pancakes, but they also sell food. So I basically took her out there as a first date. We had ribs, we had um, crepe, we had um, pancakes as well. And that was kind of a big thing. Like, I don't know, price-wise, that would have been 70, 80 bucks. But before that happened, we had already hung out like two, three times. Um, we had already probably text and spoken. So I've already sussed her out. We've already seen that we enjoy talking to each other. We've already, you know, hung out in a social, a social setting that probably didn't cost me anything. Like in a welcome party, it didn't cost me anything to talk to her. At another party that we were both going to, it didn't cost me anything to talk to her there. And only then did I say, hey, she's cool enough. I actually want to take her out on a proper date date and I want it to be something memorable. But if your whole thing is, oh, I've met someone, I've got their contact details and my first interaction is to take them out on a date. Not only is that impractical, you're also putting a lot of weight on that first date as a make or break point. Not everyone likes to jump into the deep end. You're kind of better off doing it slowly rather than straight on. You can if you want to. That's totally up to you. But I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea to plan a date like that. But I also think there are definitely better ways to go about it. But again, you can suss out really quickly. I mean, <laughs> I've dated girls from a lot of different cultures. In some cultures... It is in their culture for the guy to pay. I kind of think that's kind of like, hmm, I'm not going to do that long term. But like I've dated girls, for example, from China. For them, it's grind, uh, it's ground into their culture that the guy pays. And if the guy's not paying, so what? She thinks she's not worth, uh, he thinks he's, you're not worth that money. You know what I mean? So that's how they're raised. 
And typically it's their mums and dads raising them that way. So there's also cultural aspects. Yeah, so I would say do a bit of research too. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> do a bit of research. But there's also been girls that I've hung out with, which are basically like, well, I'm not going to pay anything. And, you know, they've been spoiled rotten by their parents and all that sort of stuff. And for people like that, by the end of the first date, I was kind of like, there's not going to be a second date. I still paid, but I still had my fun. You know what I mean? And then after that, I was like, cool, awesome. And she'd be like, can't wait for next time. And I'm like, mm hmm, yep, next time. Not interested. Had my fun, got you out of my system, no next time. And then they're like, I feel used. I'm like, really? You feel used? I got my money's worth. I don't know about you. But, um, <laughs> You know what I mean? So just, yeah, I don't know. That's, those are my, I, I wouldn't even call it words of wisdom. That's just what I do. Take that how you will. Ah, true, true. Casually committing all this to memory. Praise be to the date master. I'm not a date master. I don't date. Like, I don't date. <laughs> like, the number of girls I've dated is probably below four. The number of girls I've hung out with considerably larger you it's 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 also the culture you see I, th I think you might be overthinking it a little bit because nowadays particularly in the west it's very much a hookup culture it's less about the whole formal dating pro it's sweet by the way dating is sweet if you play your cards right you can come across as the sweetest guy in the world but it's a very casual culture in the west in the west it's more like i'm going to this place do you want to come sort of thing, rather than a let me plan this date that I hope you will like sort of culture. Uh, but if you do want to show a little bit of, you know, initiative and you want to give a little bit of attention and things like that, that can come across as really sweet. That can also come across as really desperate. So you got to really tactically assess the person that you're dealing with and also try to get into their mind a little bit of how will they perceive this gesture? Because some people will perceive it as being amazingly sweet and it's what they've always wanted and they love you for it and some people are going to be like what the fuck why is he putting so much into this you know what i mean so i don't know just think about it a bit think about it a bit think about it a bit i mean what, what what's what's the word i mean let, let's do this instead of dinner why don't you i don't know go for dessert. Like don't even have dinner, just have dessert. Don't even do it as a late thing or a lunch thing. Do it as a two, three o'clock thing for like 30 minutes or 45 minutes, like casual as fuck. Like if you're working in the city, for example, why don't you spend one of your lunches, which might be 30 minutes or an hour together somewhere locally. There might be a park in the city or there might be something. Go for a walk. Grab a gelato or something. Grab a frozen yogurt. Just like talk. Literally walk and talk. You'll suss out so much about the person. They'll show you automatically what they're interested in. Whether or not they like ice cream or frozen yogurt or coffee or tea or whatever. Another thing, while you're walking, you've got the surroundings. You've got bookstores. You've got music stores. You've got cinemas. Like, obviously they're going to point out something that they like. You can just talk about whatever's in the vicinity, you know? And then you'll automatically get to see what they're all about and whether or not, you know, you share any interests. And also you're kind of taking them out of the environment and getting their mind off whatever they were thinking about that day. I mean, that's probably going to be considerably more effective than trying to sort of take up a person's evening. Because that's, you know, because if that goes wrong you've kind of taken up this person's whole evening and it's harder to get them to commit to an evening as opposed to getting someone to commit to a lunch break during a work day, if you work close together, as an example. I mean, if you're working in a business district and you meet someone cute out and about on lunch, go fucking talk to them and catch up with them at another lunch. Like, hell yeah, fuck yeah, do that. <laughs> you know why? Because there's hundreds and thousands of people and if they say no, no one's gonna know and they're not gonna remember you. <laughs> Kuma is an adept at the hunt. I am not. I am just the type of guy that does not care. <laughs> I've hit fuck it a long time ago. <laughs> I've hit fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> like, I could get dumped tomorrow and I'll be like, eh. <laughs> I've hit fuck it. I don't care if I screw up. I've been at that point where 
remember how I said that girl, or, you know, the types of girls that expect you to pay? I've been on a first date where the girl ticked me off by saying something and it was kind of like time to pay it. And I was like, she's really pissed me off. And it came time to pay it. And then the waiter will come is like, yep, we're splitting the bill. And then she'll just be like looking at me like, what the fuck? And I'm just sitting there going like, You ticked me off. And it's like, you're not getting any. And I'm like, I've done the calculation. You're not worth half the meal. Trust me. I haven't said that, but that was my look. Like, I can be a bitch too. I can be a bitch when I want to be. And I often am. But, like, you get my point. It's, you just hit fuck it. You, once you hit fuck it, a lot of doors are going to be open. It's like going into a job interview and not caring whether or not you get the job. You will respond honestly and you will leave an impression. They'll either like you, in which case that's the company you want to work for, or they'll say, God, no, you're not a fit for our culture, in which case you win because you're not going to get a job in a company that's going to make you die on the inside. So like, my words of advice, hit fuck it as quickly as possible. And you only get that by fucking up a lot of times. So... Hit on as many girls as you can and fuck up as many times as you can. You'll gain the most experience that way. Just, you know, don't do it from the same social circle. You don't want to be that guy that's hitting on every girl in a social circle. <laughs> and Frick is like, Kuma. See what I mean? I'm a little bit of a bitch. Yep. <sighs> What the fuck is Hutchin doing with me? Anyways, let's take a quick little two, three minute break and continue on with the next episode. Thank God Hutchin doesn't watch my videos. <laughs>